Okay, a video here to uh, help you to prepare for your uh, value assignment. Uh, this assignment uh, uh, will uh, actually be due uh, next week uh, for, for those I'm creating it for here in uh, January of 2019, but this might, might be a useful uh, video I uh, leave up for a while uh, because it really has to do with this initial value assignment. And uh, what I'm going to do is kind of show you some of the uh, shortcuts and um, easy ways to uh, help you uh, uh, do this assignment. So uh, first, as we say here, let's see, why can I not, I can see size increased. We, uh, you're to select one of the companies represented in your group. Now, uh, let me talk about this a little. Um, yeah, I would think probably pretty obviously uh, the uh, person whose group is selected, uh, the person whose company is selected for the group uh, will um, perhaps have a little more work to do in the, uh, in the assignment. Uh, but uh, all of these assignments lead to the midterm and each of you will be doing this assignment uh, most of the time uh, in your own midterm. So in other words, it is very much to your advantage to have your company used in one of these group assignments because you get feedback from me. You find out if it was a, you know, uh, certainly you should shoot for at least a B quality uh, paper. So uh, with that, uh, pick one of the companies. Uh, once you pick to the companies, uh, you have some mechanical things to do and then some thinking things to do. So uh, what we try to do most of the time in here is combine uh, analytical um, uh, decision making for value creation to find uh, to pull together numbers to pull together some thinking to pull together some analysis and to come to some conclusions so you are asked to for the last three years da 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 I'm not going to read this uh, <clears throat> but I will uh, show you um, how to how to how to do it uh, putting together the income statement and uh, then I will leave to you how to figure out how to make this uh, look good. Uh, this is going to be a business report. It needs to look like a business professional created it. Uh, one, of the, uh, uh, one of the significant uh, components of, of all of your grades is going to be your communication quality. And, um, you know, I frankly am not going to uh, uh, show you how to do that. I don't teach um, uh, Word. I don't teach... Uh, uh, Excel, uh, but I do expect you to be able to use them well. You can always stop by uh, the Writing and Learning Center, the Math Center. you got lots of places you can get help for this if you need to. All right, so uh, to do this uh, assignment, the first thing you do is obviously I uh, have to pick a company. And I'm going to use Amazon. Amazon right now is perhaps the most interesting company in the world, not least because... The uh, owner, Jeff Bezos, just uh, got divorced, and he and his wife, uh, he moved from, I think, the richest man to the world to one of the richest five men in the world, and his wife is now one of the richest five people in the world. So we can't say richest men in the world anymore. We have to say richest people. Uh, go, uh, uh, go, uh, go, uh, go women. Uh, last I heard... Uh, as I said, they're going to walk away with about $70 billion each, uh, probably enough to you know, get them through Christmas um, uh, season next year anyway. <clears throat> All right, so I opened it up, and uh, a lot of the content on the first page is, um, at this point, uh, pretty irrelevant. This is what their uh, stock is selling for right now. Every time somebody buys another share, you see it go up or down a little bit. And... Uh, where I begin, or where I like to begin, is by hitting max on the stock chart, okay? And so what we can see is since uh, May of 1997, and it's about as big as I can get it, but uh, by now you should be able to, to see everything. I'm posting all these in high def, so uh, as you, um, I, I, re I refuse to, to use this uh, uh, crappy Panopto product because it doesn't allow uh, the, the definition I need. So you're looking uh, at this um, uh, if you choose uh, to download in high definition uh, from, uh, from, from YouTube. And, uh, you know, a long period of, uh, you know, fairly uh, consistent uh, growth and whoppa, 
And I'm not going to talk a lot today. I'll talk as we move through time because I'll use Amazon a lot about uh, why. Uh, but then, you know, this huge peak up here and then, um, you know, a very significant drop uh, over uh, recent time. <clears throat> So let's do a two, few things here uh, while we're here. We'll, uh, we're going to move to full screen, which gets me something called an interactive chart. Uh, I'm going to stay at max, and um, unfortunately, you know, and I, I hate it when Yahoo does this to, to me. Uh, they did something really wacky. I have no idea what happened there. Let me see if I can go to five year and fix that. Uh, ah, okay, I see what's going on here. I have, I'm on the comparison chart, uh, and I don't know how to get off of it, so I'm going to just return. And by the way, uh, what you see me doing here is as is, um, is common as you're moving from one function or another to in, um, in any of these websites. Uh, sometimes you just go down a, uh, a path and uh, uh, end up, what we're going to have to do here is actually start over from the beginning because this is one of those pages that just uh, froze there and won't let me back up and move. Uh, ta -ta. So uh, reopening uh, Amazon. Uh, looking at, and I'm going to max it here without uh, clicking on the chart, uh, the significant growth over a long period of time. Now, as we drop down here, we're going to start looking at some numbers. Uh, I don't want your eyes to glaze over. You've seen all of this in finance. Uh, you've probably not been taught yet that uh, it's marketing's responsibility to create this value. In other words, we'll talk about uh, how much uh, 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 Amazon's actually worth. And um, while, you know, the finance folk measure it for us and sometimes can contribute to it, and uh, so can operations and everybody else, the primary responsibility for uh, generating value falls to marketers. So that's what, that's uh, the name of this course, uh, 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 Decision Making for Value Creation. We see first here a number, very important numbers we're going through the semester called market cap. It's uh, short for market capitalization. It's a little over $800 billion, okay? So let me stop there, 800B with a billion. Uh, it's one of those things, you stack those uh, $100 bills and uh, they still go from here to the moon or back, something uh, exaggerating a little bit. But it is huge. Um, to my knowledge, it is the um, most valuable enterprise in the world right now. A little while, for a little while, uh, Apple uh, bounced in back and forth. Uh, uh, Google uh, and Alphabet have kind of bounced back and forth, and I haven't even looked at them uh, this semester. We will be shortly. Uh, but last time I looked, uh, uh, Amazon was the most valuable company in the world. To give you kind of um, uh, an example, uh, uh, Amazon's wealth is greater than the entire country of Denmark the last time I looked. Okay, so really, really, really big numbers when you look at these. Now, market cap is often confused with value of a company. In fact, you'll hear some otherwise intelligent people say, uh, you know, the market cap, or equate the two and say, uh, Amazon right now is worth uh, $800 billion. And that ignores some uh, basic economics and ignores a whole lot of history uh, because all we do to calculate market cap is take the current price, $1,661, multiply it by the current shares outstanding, which is on another page, and that gives you $800 billion and completely ignores the fact that everybody that owns a share of stock right now in Amazon uh, is not willing to sell it for $1,661. Uh, uh, some would sell it at 1662, some would sell it at 1670, some would sell at 2000, some wouldn't sell at all. Okay? So, what we know from history uh, of acquisitions at, is that the true value of a company is about, and you'll hear me use the word about a lot in this class. Uh, I want you to kind of get almost an intuitive feel of numbers. The uh, market value of companies is about one and a half times the market cap. 
So I'll say that again. Uh, while the very last person who sold a share of stock sold it for $1,660-something, everybody else wants more. So if you came in and tried to buy everybody's stock, you'd have to keep paying more and more and more. And we know over history from acquisitions that it would take about a trillion, uh, about 1.5 times the market cap to buy it. 8 times 1.5 is an easy number to work with for us because it's 1.2 trillion. The estimated true value of Apple is 1.2 trillion dollars. Okay? Now, so of that $1.2 trillion, uh, and, and before we actually leave this page, the uh, next thing we want to look at is something called a price-earnings ratio. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to, again, go into the uh, technical definition of a P-E ratio. Uh, you want to look it up, you're welcome to, but I'll tell you how to use it. Historically, and over a long period of time, for all companies, the P.E. ratio has run between about 15 and about 25, okay? So let me say that again. The average, if you averaged all the companies in the world, weighted based on the, the size of them, so that, uh, you know, the bigger they are, the more they weighted, um, overall, the P.E. ratio is, would, would be somewhere between 15 and 25. And as I do this video, just checked it, uh, sure enough, it's sitting right at 20, okay, which is good news for me uh, because um, last year was not a good year. My wife and I uh, worked the uh, year uh, and uh, lost a lot more in the uh, market than we made uh, in income. But the fact that the market is only operating now at about a 20 price earnings means there's a lot of room upward to grow. Uh, a year ago, it was in the uh, 23 to 25 range, and uh, I'm, uh, an op I'm optimistic about the future. Uh, I think some of the bumps we're going through now are going to get smoothed out a little bit, and uh, I think there's a lot of upward uh, movement in the overall market. But the question becomes, and how you use the PE ratio for your company, in my case, Amazon, I'm looking at, is, um, and you can just sort of memorize this if you want to, if the P.E. ratio is above the average companies, okay, and we've just said the average companies is about 20, the company is expected to grow a lot more. When it is four times the current average of all companies, it is expected to grow a lot more. If you have a P.E. ratio of 10, okay, and when we looked at Apple, the last time I looked at Apple, their P.E. ratio was very low. They, it's just the opposite. They are expected to grow a lot less than the average company. So this P.E. ratio is a valuation, uh, it's, it's a number created by what I consider the smartest people in the world, who are the people who determine what the value of a company is. And uh, the expectations for growth for Amazon are extraordinary. And one of the things we'll do as we wander through this class is try to understand exactly why. Uh, what has happened that has made them worth so much money? Uh, as you look at your question, uh, after you do some of the mechanical things, I'll show you how to do in a minute. Uh, the question asks you to what extent... Do the, does the movement in the stock chart, and especially this enormous run-up here, uh, I'll switch it to five year, over the last uh, uh, five years or so, okay, accompanying by, by a, a general downturn in the entire market here, doesn't really have much to do with Amazon, how much of it has to do with their financials, uh, the income statement specifically, okay? And as you can look here, and again, I don't want you to get too, uh, you know, hung up and multiplying and dividing and all that stuff. We'll do that in a spreadsheet. But you ought to be able to look at 88 and see that 107 is a whole lot bigger and 135 is a whole lot bigger and 177 is a whole lot bigger. One of the reasons Amazon is growing so rapidly, their value is so high, is that their revenues are growing dramatically. Okay. 
Now, uh, with Amazon, and we will stop, by the way, here at operating income in this class. Marketers don't have impact on anything else. In a ordinary company, you would look at operating income. Uh, they were almost at break even, and this is in 2014. In 2015, uh, they were uh, they made a couple billion dollars. They grew to four billion. Uh, let's see, yeah, and these are four billion, and they kind of hung out there. So their operating income is not growing. And we don't really care, we, by we, I mean the market, the owners, the uh, people who are valuing it, because we're saying they're growing so rapidly here, okay, that we are willing to say, no, we don't want profit from you. We want you to take every penny you can and invest it right back into growing again. Um, and right now, one of the major growth efforts they're looking at is perhaps opening a whole lot more whole food markets. Uh, we might have a chance at a Whole Food. We might have a chance at a decent grocery store here uh, at, at some point because you can put a Whole Food market now um, in uh, in Silva, uh, capture much of the uh, grocery market in uh, in um, Swain, Franklin, uh, and uh, Haywood counties. Uh, you know, a lot of people would uh, uh, would drive that far for a uh, for a Whole Food market. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> in this case, uh, let's see, as I return to the question, for the past three years, create a table. We'll do that next. But the how does the income statement, statement it help explain variations in stock value? Uh, the answer is through growth in revenues. Uh, the income growth is not significant. We don't really care about that. But we are looking for them to drive continuing revenue growth. Uh, as you notice here, the last report was 1231-2017. That means somewhere about halfway through this semester, uh, because it takes most companies about 90 days, <clears throat> excuse me, about 45 to uh, 60 days, we will see a year end uh, 2018. And uh, as you can see here, this went 107, this is 135. This is 177. This next number is going to be in the $200 billion range, just looking at how they're growing. Okay? We'll, uh, we'll actually have fun uh, forecasting them a little, uh, a little bit later. All right, so let's return to our question, and uh, we're, now, we're now ready to do, I think, uh, the mechanical. I'm not going to do all this mechanical stuff for you, but I'll show you how. Notice here, um, that's just a highlight. I then control C or right click and copy. Uh, I go to, um, I think I'm going to open up a clean Excel because I was fiddling around with that web sheet. Uh, it's always a good idea to open a clean web sheet uh, when you're using uh, any Microsoft product. They're liable to do strange things to you. <coughs> I want to paste, uh, and so I just go control V. And already I've got problems. This worked perfectly a minute ago, so um, I've done something wrong here. I hope it's easy to fix because I don't want to stop and have to uh, recreate this video. <clears throat> so I'm highlighting here. I'll try doing it a different way. I'm going to copy. Uh, I'm going to open up an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, blank workbook, and yeah, I got my paste special this time. That's what you're looking for, and you want to paste it as HTML, and as you can see now, uh, it dumped all my numbers. I didn't have my uh, cursor in the right place, so i got to delete all these columns, <clears throat> and I now have to, uh, all I have to do is uh, and I've got my numbers. Now I'm going to do a little uh, little bit of cleaning up. Uh, here's one easy cleanup. I want to go to everything, and I want to uh, right-click on it and pick Format Cells, and first format them as General. 
And as you notice there, that got rid of all those big wide cells that are so uh, aggravating. <clears throat> Next thing I want to do is uh, select uh, all of my numbers. You see I've selected here up to uh, <clears throat> uh, date. And uh, I'm going to change those to dollars. I'm going to eliminate the uh, the uh, pennies. When we start getting up into the hundreds of billions of dollars, pennies are, are pretty useless sorts of things to have. And I've now copied the spreadsheet. have a few more things, though, to uh, clean up. Uh, one is I have uh, a couple of just title uh, rows, so I'm going to delete that one. And uh, for some, uh, I've got uh, non-recurring, and again, there's nothing in this row. So if there's nothing in a row, I'm going to go ahead uh, and delete it. Okay. And for some reason, uh, Yahoo, uh, who I generally like and haven't been mad at, and I've been using them for about 15 years, uh, uh, they've decided to add in some of these uh, income statements, not all, but some, something called total operating expenses, which is uh, it's just kind of a, a totally useless number. What they do is add uh, these expenses here, our fixed expenses, to cost of revenue, and it, it, it's just really an irrelevant number. So <clears throat> if your uh, company happens to have it, delete it. Okay? And I now have a clean sheet. And up here, if you remember your accounting terms, I... Uh, I have my revenue, my cost of revenue, uh, if you want to think of it like a lemonade stand. Uh, if you sell your lemonade for a dollar, then uh, and you sell 100 cups, uh, your total revenue would be $100. Your cost of revenue is the cost of lemons and sugar in your coat. And if you have to hire your little brother to pay your direct labor, that's your cost of revenue. And that leaves us something called gross profit. And managing the numbers these ways allows us to do all sorts of interesting uh, calculations we'll do later. Now, I know I'm going to need a row here because I've been asked to calculate gross profit margin. And as usual, I hide in the wrong place to do it. I want to insert a row here. <clears throat> OK. And it uh, looks like I've got all my cells right. So I'm going to name that gross profit margin. That's one of the things the question asks you to calculate. <clears throat> it also asks you to calculate uh, operating margin. Now, don't ask me why up here it's gross profit margin and down here it's operating margin. Uh, I have no idea. It's just convention. That's what business people do. And so that's what we're going to do. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> margin, all margin is is an instruction to you to divide me, in this case, gross profit, whatever the words are before margin, by revenues. Okay? So anytime you see a margin, the margin is just telling you to, as you'll see me do here, divide gross profit by revenues. Okay? I'll hit enter there. I'll copy across. And uh, I will, of course, change to uh, percent. Okay? So that's my gross profit margin. I will do the same thing with operating margin. Okay, I think I did that correctly. So let's copy it across. And convert to percent. And actually here, add a, a decimal. Okay? So again, as, as we mentioned before, um, with uh, Amazon uh, as an owner, and I own some uh, shares of Amazon, I'm sure, and one of my uh, various and sundry uh, mutual funds, <clears throat> I would be very upset if Amazon 
had higher margins because I want them to be taking all that money they can because they've demonstrated the ability to grow and be doing things in research and development and selling general administration. These are your salespeople. This is the building of new buildings. Um, this is uh, the paying of engineers to create uh, new uh, web uh, platforms. <clears throat> uh, and um, uh, so, so again, the operating income and the operating margins don't tell us much other than that they have shown, and it is kind of important, uh, no matter how fast your business is growing, it's pretty important that you demonstrate to us that you can make money, okay? <clears throat> okay, uh, switch this to max. And uh, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not even going to do part of it. Uh, I'll let you figure out yourself, but uh, there's a, you can do a, a print screen. You can do, you can do a whole lot of different things to get yourself to, uh, uh, and, you know, as I said earlier, uh, Yahoo has, hasn't made me mad lately. Uh, they are making me increasingly angry with, uh, with the things they're doing, uh, forcing me to, to uh, every time I hit the chart, to have to start over. <clears throat> so don't be surprised if sometimes this semester you send me uh, testing some of the other, uh, or if you yourself are more comfortable with somebody like Morningstar or Google Finance, uh, you're welcome to use it. Um, you may be seeing me join you. Uh, Yahoo hasn't been doing a good job of, of, uh, of, of managing some of these things lately. <clears throat> So set the stock chart to a max, do a uh, screen capture or <coughs> use a uh, capture uh, function and uh, 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 have at it, okay? All right, so down here, uh, the next thing we want to do and the next part of the question is to calculate the uh, <coughs> estimated true value and the... Uh, uh, What's the word we used for them? <clears throat> uh, unrecorded assets. Unrecorded assets are really fun things we're going to get to talk about. So we start with, um, and we're only going to do it for uh, the last year. You do it at any. Uh, you can do it at any point you want. We're gonna, actually we're going to do it for right now, not for last year. This will be one fifteen two thousand nineteen. You can calculate it for whenever you want, but <clears throat> first thing we'll do is put down the market cap. And the market cap uh, was uh, 820, uh, and I'll go 000. One of the things you're going to have to be careful with as you're moving through, these numbers are all in thousands here. I am now converting to all numbers in millions. All that means is, after the number you see here, if it's in thousands, you add zero, zero, zero. If it's in millions, you add zero, 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 zero. So if I added six more zeros here, that would become 820 billion. Get myself to dollars, get rid of those pennies, which aren't even pennies at that point, they're pretty big numbers. <clears throat> I'll put here multiplier. And I'll put in a parentheses, 1.5. You can make an argument, and if you want to, you know, get uh, technical with me, uh, you can uh, look up other different kinds of companies, see what sort of multiples, high-tech companies in the, in the um, uh, uh, e-commerce business have sold at. Or, or you can just uh, do like I do and, and do 1.5. I think most of the time, if I was really, really being technical, I'd go to 1.6. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy with 1.5. It's a little easier for me to multiply in my head. So I'm going to go plus 120 uh, times 1.5. And that says to me, as we looked at earlier, uh, Amazon is worth about $1.2 trillion. A lot of money. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is uh, go see what our friends, the accountants, are able to tell us. And as we know uh, from our accounting classes, the place we find assets is on the balance sheet. 
Okay? Now, on the balance sheet, uh, we have some nice little shortcuts here. Okay? Uh, and since, again, I'm using millions and not thousands, I'm only going to grab these. So I'll get a 10,988. This is the most recent one. And yeah, we're mixing a little and maxing a little. That's all right. <clears throat> I'll dump that number in. Have it recognize it as uh, HTML. And sometimes when you're cutting and pasting, uh, it's easier just to go uh, 10,988. You know, I want to make this a number. <clears throat> Okay, and those are net tangible assets. Net tangible assets. Tangible assets are things we can touch. Uh, they're machines, they're equipments, but they're also cash. Okay, so you go to Amazon and you're their accountant and you sit down and you go everywhere through the company. You count all the stuff up that they own, all the equipment, all the buildings, all the warehouses, all the cash. Then you subtract out everything they owe, their current bills, any loans they might have, uh, any liabilities they might have, and you have left, um, in this case, $10 billion. Now, as we return to the balance sheet, and uh, some uh, again, some of your eyes may glaze over at this point, so if it's easier for you just to memorize things, that's, uh, that's cool. Because along with net tangible assets, there are a couple of other things. Uh, accountants very slowly, creepingly, reluctantly, have uh, been moving toward um, trying to get to something that represents true value because their balance sheets is frankly so damn stupid. Uh, it doesn't explain much of anything to us. <clears throat> but what they do with some assets is every year they make us look at those and say, are they really worth that anymore? Goodwill arises when we buy a company for a value in excess of its net tangible assets. We just talked about those. Uh, almost always when you buy a company, they have unrecorded assets, as we'll see here in a second. <clears throat> and when you go in and buy, those, uh, buy that company, uh, those those unrecorded assets become recorded as goodwill. And so for at least a little while, we know what the company was actually worth. Uh, same thing with intangible assets, except uh, it's when we're buying intellectual property, things like patents and other stuff. So we can look at these two and say, along with the net tangible assets, which is the stuff we can count, we are required to also have these numbers that have to be pretty close. And 13 and 3, uh, there's a, there's a, we'll add 13 and 3 and make it 16, and then that's enough to get us to 17. And uh, uh, let's see. Let me make sure I keep get my uh, numbers uh, right because I don't want to mess you up. <clears throat> it's a zero, zero, so it takes 13, 350. So I'll make it 16, 7, 20. You can, of course, uh, do that more accurately, but I'm, I'm doing this in my head here. <clears throat> and we just call these intangible and good will. Okay? Now, unrecorded assets, the stuff that the accountants cannot tell us what it is, what they are, are calculated by taking the, uh, <clears throat> let me change this a little bit here. Excuse me. I'm just going to, uh, I left that in there while uh, I was discussing. Um, and I'll just leave the 1.5 in so you can see what I've done there. And being the obsessive compulsive, compulsive person I can, I'm going to have to correct my spelling. <clears throat> and I now get to calculate. Uh, this is my estimated true value. 
the accountants have told me that I have this much in net tangible assets and this much in intangible assets and goodwill. And yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and I like to, just for the fun of it, you can see that I'm amused uh, easily, uh, do this as a percentage too and go click, okay? What I'm saying here is that the unrecorded assets represent 98% of the value of Amazon. In other words, of the $1.23 trillion uh, dollars that Amazon is valued at, our accountants can explain a big old 2%. The other 98% is unexplained, unrecorded. What is it? Here's where it's fun. It's patents. It is, uh, <clears throat> it is market position. Okay? Uh, it is uh, what market position takes into account, share and competitive position. It is things like distribution uh, channels. They have more uh, warehouses than anybody else in the world. It is uh, <clears throat> more than probably anything else uh, brand loyalty. I've been a Amazon Prime member since Amazon Prime existed. It is enormously valuable to me. I live in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I can order things like I just ordered a bag of Kona coffee. Uh, Kona coffee comes from uh, from Hawaii. It's the best coffee, most people would agree, in the world. It costs 50 bucks a pound. Uh, I've had a hard week, and I want a real nice cup of coffee. Um, and so it would take a lot for, um, for um, uh, Amazon to, uh, to lose my, uh, the portion of my retail uh, purchases, which increase every year, uh, without me. Okay? Now, <clears throat> as we go through class, we'll continue uh, to talk about these and how you do them. But the important thing to notice here, okay, is that um, <clears throat> these are marketing efforts. Even patents, which you might say, well, you know, no, that's your uh, programmers. Uh-uh. Somebody told that programmer, I need to be able to do something, and that programmer did it, and then patented it, okay? So marketers, us, we, those of us uh, who are sitting in this company, uh, are responsible for 98% of the value of the most valuable company in the world. As we move to different companies, that'll change a little bit. In some cases, uh, it'll be small. In your particular company, uh, uh, it might be quite small, uh, <clears throat> And in rare instances, um, this number can actually be negative. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about those if you happen to stumble across one of those companies. All right, so let's return here to uh, our question. Uh, we've cut and pasted uh, the uh, income statement. We've added, uh, let's see, there's one thing we didn't do, changes in revenue. Uh, so I need to return real quickly here to my income statement. I want to uh, insert a row, okay, and I want to calculate revenue growth. And the way we do that is <clears throat> uh, current year minus previous year divided by previous year. Okay, I'm going to hit this and it's going to be an error because, uh, whoops, it's going to be an error because I just did the wrong formula. Minus previous year divided by previous year. And it'll be wrong until I go in and put my parentheses in. The uh, subtraction has to be done uh, before the division. Okay, 
And so I now have, whoops, title it here, revenue growth. And uh, even though uh, they're getting real big, this is not a small company anymore by any measure, measure of the uh, 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 size of companies, uh, they are not only continuing to grow uh, dramatically, they're growing at an increasing rate, okay? 20%, then 27 and then 31%, partly um, uh, helped by some, uh, some acquisitions, obviously, okay? And so what can the income statement tell us about the stock value, the creation of the $1.2 trillion in value company? Uh, it's that revenue growth is driving that value more than anything else. In, in the, uh, in the uh, income statement. And we can also say in part two of the question, which is calculate unrecorded assets, what are some of the likely reasons for these? How does, the, uh, how does this calculation help explain variations in stock value? We first calculate it here. And then uh, uh, we say, uh, it, once we've described what those are, to finish up the final part of the question is, Amazon has done an incredible job of creating and dominating uh, e-commerce, uh, retail e-commerce. It is uh, difficult to see anyone else uh, overtaking them. Walmart has the best shot, but they started about five years late. Uh, they blew it. Uh, they know it. Uh, they're getting better. Uh, will they get better enough to get any of my business? You know, I buy probably 150 orders a year from Amazon. I buy probably two orders a year from Walmart, maybe five from eBay. So question is, I don't know. Uh, it's going to be tough for anyone to, uh, to gain on them. So that's an example of uh, how to do your assignment. Uh, you will be getting together on Wednesday, uh, meeting your uh, group members um, and uh, making plans for coming in on the following Wednesday, ready to go to work and uh, complete this assignment. On Wednesdays, as a general rule, we have something called outcomes-based learning. When you finish and you demonstrate to me that you have learned what I want you to do, which is what I've just gone through, you're done. I'll say uh, have a good afternoon. So um, the more work you get done on Wednesday as you're deciding which company to do first or which companies, I have no problem at all with you doing multiple companies. You uh, do. You can only turn in one. I'm not going to grade multiple, but I'll be happy to look up at them for you. And then you'll get start uh, really getting this understanding here. This is the key learning. Uh, the hardest thing we do is... Uh, making for value creation, uh, what do I do next to, uh, to continue to create value? Okay, hope this has been useful, and I will see you, uh, and again, this is the 2019 spring semester course, though this video may remain longer. Uh, I will see that particular uh, group uh, on the Wednesday uh, after Martin Luther King Day, which will be... Uh, uh, unless I've made a mistake here, the uh, 23rd of January.